Hello and welcome to the JR's Gaming Podcast, where we talk about the rise of Nintendo and what this great gaming franchise has in store for us in the future of gaming and, of course, the country from which it was born, Japan. I'm your host, Judah Terry, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host and good friend, Rowan Fern. Rowan Fern, yeah. it's it's the morning time. I've just gone out of bed. I've got to rush everything, get my hair Hello. combed, grab my morning coffee, which I'm still drinking, so I'm still half dead, all here for the podcast because you've got to go and watch your bloody football instead of record the podcast. God live, Ro. What's, <laughs> what's going on with you? Why football again? <laughs> How you uh, doing, mate? How you doing? I'm all right, yeah. Uh, uh, put up the uh, Christmas decorations, like on, I think it was December 6th, I think. Um, so yeah, the whole house is like, we've still got a few more to put up, but it's mainly all there because we've got like outdoor lights as well. Like yeah. a bunch of outdoor lights. So it takes a while to put everything up. So, but yeah, it's but, a nine yeah. December. I'm feeling good. You know, it's uh, the, the you know the feeling of Christmas is like there. The feeling so. of Christmas is there. <laughs> exactly. You heard it here yeah. first. Yeah. Well, Ryan, it's um yeah. No, today you literally are in like under an uh, over an hour, just just about to shoot off to see a, a football match as well. Yeah. Another one. <laughs> and it's like you take it's very, yeah. yeah. The thing really? is, is that, that, that the, most of the time they're on Saturday, which is like. Mm. That's the thing. That's the, the thing. Like, the podcast is also on Saturday. <laughs> the, podcast, the problem is, yeah. though, the thing is, right, is that I, now I've got, like, what's it, Wednesday and Thursday mm. free. I can, like, I can pre-record then. It was just, like, this time, like, I wasn't free on those days, so. Yeah, I mean, we're actually, guys, we were going to pre-record, like, yesterday, but then something came up for me, and then and Rome was like, oh, I'm too tired. So, like, well, we can do it then. <laughs> like, we can, we, can, we can wake up early enough. Just to get yeah, it in for yeah. the ball match, and like we're actually starting forty-eight minutes late. So we, we, we this episode again is our apologies if we're not as relaxed as like if you know what I mean. Like we, we usually like to go yeah. on massive rants and and tangents, but unfortunately today we have to watch the tangent borders here because watch um, the tangent. What the tangents? Because yeah, Ryan. Otherwise, you're gonna miss the football match. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, Ryan. Yeah, you're. Uh, so I said before my solo episode, you're one of the most committed footballer people I've oh, yeah, know. absolutely I heard that yeah yeah always <laughs> going to the football never misses a match it's always good I mean to be fair you know it, it, you said that you want to take me to a football match one day that's going to be interesting I will do one day yeah yeah I've never actually been Ryan you need to get me into the hype of football it's basically like <laughs> the atmosphere is basically just like a bunch of like old farts swearing <laughs> like, so like it's like what a player like misses a shot they go oh for fuck's sake I'm going to score that <laughs> oh well they actually say that so like some 60 year old yeah. man in a wheelchair is like yeah, oh, Scored like, that like what? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like no, you couldn't. No, you it's couldn't. Like, yeah, it's like it's funny yeah. how like the, the fans think that they can do better than the oh, team. Oh yeah, absolutely. The like, fans we think lost. That they, fans yeah. think that they can like do anything. That's the thing. Yeah. Oh like, no. <laughs> Yeah. I love the chants, like the famous football chants. Like there's all sorts oh, of ones amazing. like like your dad's a wanker. Oh da 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 like, it's just really yeah, stupid yeah. things. Like, it's, it's just, just stupid <laughs> things, yeah. It's like listen, it, the tour if a tour, if you're a tourist right now and like if you're someone like from the USA or somewhere outside of the UK and you want to have the British experience, don't go to London. Don't go <laughs> to like all the nice places that the tourist places don't go, you know, don't go to Birmingham and all that area and, and, and tour and be a tourist and go to the bus shops. Go to a bloody football match because you'll get the most British experience you'll ever have. You know, the, the British experience, Rowan, I think we can all agree, is eating an Indian curry or swearing and watching like a football match. Like, it's, it's like the most multicultural but stupid culture we've got. <laughs> and yeah. it's, it, it just, it's just, it, it I'm is. not making much sense. But what, what I'm trying to say is go to a football match and you experience pr- true British culture. Right? That's the true British culture. Well, yeah. You'll see it. You'll see it there. Um, but anyway, yeah, man. Um, yeah, anyway, Chris, yeah, yeah. Um, Christmas spirit. Christmas spirit. I'm, I'm, I, you sue me for this. I've not got my tree up yet. I still haven't got the tree up. Still haven't got the decorations up. It's the 9th of <gasps> December. I can't be, can't be that bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But the problem is, yeah. right? Um, my, we've recently been going through like the whole entire house. Like we did my entire room up, which was a palaver, but it's done now. Uh, and now we're going through the downstairs and like going through everything, like for Christmas, and make sure that like we're just going through all the cupboards. We're going getting rid of a whole bunch of stuff. So 
the kind of the living room right now is all over the place. My dad's like getting rid of all this stuff and tidying things up. He's like, we can only get the decorations out once we've gone through everything and sorted the house out. So like, I'm right, like yeah. I don't know I'm, when my parents say they're going to get something done. It takes about ten years and then it's done. So I'm hoping we get the Christmas tree up this December. Uh, but it's just looking like a bit of a, a late Christmas tree. And the funny thing is, like, the funny thing is, we even if we put the Christmas decorations up. We'll only be enjoying it for like the season up to Christmas because we're actually not at my house for Christmas. We're actually yeah, going yeah, down yeah. in down in Kent and going and seeing family for Christmas. So yeah, but, but we're still going to get that tree. Which is why yeah. we aren't recording the Christmas special the day it releases on the twenty third. <laughs> actually, I think that's a good transition road right, into the Christmas special. We've actually prepared it now. We have a recording date, and we're actually recording it tomorrow. Like, tomorrow it's, all, it's, yeah. it's not going to come out tomorrow. No, hell no. It's going to be. We, we're recording at uh, six in the evening, aren't we? Yeah, we're recording at six in the evening. There's going to be Al Cole. There's going to be a ceremony. The reason it's be why fun. we're doing it uh, at six, like, because yeah. a lot of you are probably like, oh, why don't you just call it early, get it out of the way? Because, but it's because, uh, you know, different time zones. Oh yeah. We had to we had to optimize time zones because we've got like other YouTubers coming on. Like we've got MS Guy from America. Like he's American. We've got someone from Puerto Rico. We've got German. The we've got Germans there. We've got all these people, right? Um, friends and stuff, and everyone's from different areas. So it was a right hell of a time trying to get everyone free on the exact exactly, same yeah. time and if we've, we've got it and sadly like a couple of people have pulled out haven't yeah they? sadly we had to pull out a number of big guests that were actually going to come on that was kind of quite pivotal to be there actually like beth yeah. she can't be there so yeah, liam can't alert. be like, there there's no, there's no yeah. beth or liam there's time. no beth or liam she they can't join so if they win an award we'll they, to... they, they were all yeah. in like the they were big in like the artist debate so. yeah that was their yeah, I mean, and Beth won the last year's best like guest. Um, exactly. So, but yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, the award ceremony. There'll be a quiz. Eli will be there, guys. Eli will be there. I mean, and then some other guests. Matthew will be returning. Matthew, the MS guy, the YouTuber with over three K subs. Pretty, pretty large YouTuber. He's in Mar from Mario Kart. He's one of the best Mario Kart YouTubers I know, honestly. Uh, but he's yeah. coming. He's returning. He's returning to the podcast along with some other creators as well. We've got some other YouTubers. Big collaborative event. But we're all just going to sit there and reminisce about how the year's been, how the podcast has been. Read out the celebrate. We're going to celebrate two years of the the podcast. Of course, the anniversary is on the thirteenth of February. Uh, but this is like still the new year because after the twenty third, guys, this is just a quick warning to say there'll be no more episodes. Uh, we're going to skip the thirtieth because that's just like a call off. It's like a call off time because like we thought why don't we just end the year with a banger on the podcast yeah with guys the Christmas just special. so you know he, he doesn't mean no more episodes forever it means <laughs> just for this year just for this year yeah so we, we, you won't have an episode until next year of course there's one more episode coming out after this and then the because, Christmas special we, 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 we talked um, about it and we thought like what's it like if we like recorded on the 30th yeah. it kind of just be like a pointless episode because like we we're going to round things off in like the Christmas yeah. special and plus so. I won't be here I'll be I'll be down south I'll still be with family and I'm, I'm yeah. still Seeing some friends. The thing in, is like, that yeah. um, <laughs> we are like I think we've got uh, after we record the Christmas special like early tomorrow. Yeah. we've got one more like to pre-record and then yes. that's it. We've got the one more episode for the rest of December. That's it for the rest of this year. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, well, it's, 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 it's the year. Put, schedule them out at the right time. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> All I do is schedule them. Imagine I didn't schedule it right. <laughs> that would be a Imagine disaster. Imagine you put it out like on like on the tenth, the Christmas special. <laughs> That'd be such such an anti climax. Uh, no, I wouldn't be because I'd probably be drunk by the end it finishes. <laughs> but, wow, uh, yeah. But anyway, it's like uh, yeah, it's going to be going out by the twenty third, and um, yeah, I think yeah. So I think yeah, that's like that's like a round off. So on the new Christmas special, we're also going to be saying Happy New Year. Because it's like a close off yeah, to this year, yeah. so we're all going to celebrate and have a big party and do a big party. It's basically a party. It's a, a Giles gaming party, and y you may see more than just my face because I'm gonna, there's going to be some face reveals done. I'm going to ask because there's some other guests that are going to be just on video, but of course Rowan still hasn't got green screen, so he's still going to be anime guy uh, down in the bottom. <laughs> uh, but, but of course, we, it's a big thing, guys. Look out for it. 23rd of December is the Christmas special. Tune in. And it's uh, a big thing that we do each year, which is really fun. And we talk about the analytics of the year. We do a ceremony. We read out the awards. We do a quiz. We have fun. We get we drink alcohol, and Eli probably will get good, drunk. Actually. It's just really good. Yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. It's really good. Anyway, uh, yeah, but yeah, that's about that's really it this week. We're very busy. Ryan's getting very busy. We're all very busy. I mean, everyone's come on. Everyone's really busy. Yeah, this I mean, I'm year. putting it that I'm getting. Bu it's getting busier and busier the closer it gets to Christmas. Honestly, that's oh, why. Yeah. Like. <laughs> 
it, like that's the thing. It's just so busy. Like this time of year is just so busy. That you got, I've like I'm yeah. going around a bunch of places, going to see relatives and stuff. Oh yeah. Like, on, and on Christmas Eve, I'm actually like going like to I think to my cousins. So nice. It's, yeah. oh, it's Christmas just Eve, hectic. I'm travelling as well. It's hectic. <laughs> it's this time hectic. Is hectic. That's one word to sum it up: hectic and busy. But th- to be fair with you, Rowan, uh, me and you are attending a, a fancy Christmas dinner on December fifteenth. Can't wait for that. Fifteenth. Yeah. 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 We're attending a dinner, which we do each year. We attend a dinner with these with our suits. Um, but nice attire but anyway yeah a lot of things to do right i guess a lot of things to do but i think we should we should hit it with our first news story to get things started right what's going on this week on the news front so story number one right is this is this surprised me right and it's bandai namco expands its reach with three new retail stores in the uk what 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 three new retail bandai stores Namco's opened three stores in the uk Right, for anyone who doesn't know, would you like to explain what Bandai Namco is? It's basically like, isn't it like, it makes like video games and stuff. It may, I think yep. it was like involved in Pac-Man and stuff. And it yes. was like, yeah. But I believe so it's, it's a it's game developer's me. company, yeah. I'm a bit puzzled why they've like decided to open three stores. Yeah. But, uh, let's, let's read. Let's, let's read, so, let's read. Bandai Namco Amusement Europe has announced that it's opening three new stores in the UK over the next two weeks. The first will open on December 7, 2023 in Ealing, followed by Brighton's North Street on December 12, 2023. And finally, Meadow Hall Sheffield on December 15, 2023. The stores will feature products such as Bandai's Gashapon, which are miniature capsule collectibles and vending mm. machines. Please say that for me. Uh, it's oh, what? Ichiban Kuji, yeah. (laughs) Which translates as number one lottery and combines anime collectibles with a Lucky Dip style drawing, which everybody is a winner. And Sun Star Stationery, a branch of Bandai Namco specializing in kawaii stationery and everyday items. Arcade games will also feature at the Brighton store specifically. All will follow in 2024 with the company planning the launch of larger stores, tours, and other brand appearances. So. This is quite funny. I think it's I've, got, I've, got, I've yeah. got a friend. I've got a friend who is going to absolutely scream with joy when she hears this. I've got a friend who is that anime girl. She is the anime girl. Like, she loves anime to the point of no return. She might as well be an anime girl. She dresses <laughs> like an anime girl. She's a massive anime fan. She lives in Brighton, right. I'm not going to say. Yeah. <laughs> and but she, like, constantly sends me pictures of all these anime stores and all these anime merch. And <laughs> you get what I mean. Uh, and, like, yeah. so I think this, kawaii, ne, you know, all that anime stuff it's it's gonna be perfect for someone like her so yeah if she if she's listening to this you know who you are you're welcome for this new scoop i think honestly ryan this is just it sounds like yeah another another weeaboo store <laughs> another he is right anime Out centered store to open a store i didn't think it would be bandai namco bandai namco yeah. aren't that big Let's talk about this. Bandai say, Namco no offense, making. By the way, Bandai <laughs> Namco aren't as big. Like they're, I think they're like. Yeah. I think they beat Xbox on the list, but they're they're still quite low. And why have they just come like all of a sudden to open three stores? Like it's so specific. Like all of a sudden they popped up out of nowhere. They're like, we're we opening three stores. Like, uh, yeah, it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, well, okay, okay, okay. What's the punchline to this? Why, like, it's just like it's, a, it's like someone just like tipped them off with a bunch of money, and they're like, okay, we've got enough money to build three stores. Okay, but like, and, like but this, and even so, like exactly, even so, there's no need for need for it. I mean, I guess there is a bit of need. I mean, it's a gaming company. I mean, you might be retro game stuff. I don't know, but the, like actually, me and Eli Turp were in London. Well, he lives in London. I was visiting him in London. We went to Camden Town uh, uh, earlier this few months ago, um, and we went to the Gatchapon the Heaven. I might as well call it Gatchapon Heaven, Rowan. I think it was the best place I've ever seen. Uh, if you love Gatchapon, you will love this place. It was basically like this Japanese store in Camden Town. And you had these little Gatchapon machines, which I'm sure you know about, Rowan. They're, like, they're the little surprise balls. You put a p- pound or something, or, or, or oh, a coupon yeah, in. Yeah, 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 you yeah, turn yeah. it, and you get like a surprise character. I have one of these balls. And like, there's so many different, like, it was literally, it was literally like Gatcha. It's a Japanese thing. But, like, we've got it in London as well and other places. And Bandai Namco have also adopted it. But basically, there was, like, literally so many themed gachapons. Like, there was Pokemon, there was anime stuff. And there was even, like, the strangest, like, there was, like, plastic Japanese insects that were really well designed. (laughs) 
yeah, like beetles and stuff. And there's also axolotls, and I love that. The, the, you know, like axolotls, like the, the the amphibian with like the red frilly gill thing yeah. on the side, which are really cute looking. Yeah, there was also an axolotl gachapon machine, and there was like l little intricate detailed axolotls. I was like, this you're never going to find this anywhere else. It's all like imported so from Japan. You axolotls are cute. I know, and I, I I looked in my I looked in my wallet, and I had no money left. And Eli was like, let's go home. <laughs> oh, <laughs> before, well. before I smash the Gatchapon machines open just to try and find a bloody axle oil. But yeah. Yeah, to be honest oh, yeah, with you. Have you seen that video that's like, what's it? Um, it like, this is how you get free candy out of a candy <laughs> machine. And Excuse then, like, me. he says, turn yeah. it like five times to the right. And then he says, then you take a bat and then just like smashes it. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. <laughs> He's so. I thought, I thought that. <laughs> <laughs> that thing, uh, that's funny that's funny but the thing is about this right is that that was like, me by the uk though uh, uh, like, normally this sort of stuff isn't in the uk like they normally open it in like yeah like Japan, but that, like that's, the, that's the good thing though that's the i mean that's the good thing about london is that we're so multicultural we get like in camden town that like, you have like people from all over the world selling their stuff there like i bought i bought this hang on this is for our video listeners out there this model I'm holding right now is from Camden Town. It's a Japanese model of uh, Frost Ice, the Pokemon. And I think you've seen it before, right? It's like a bonsai tree, uh, like a blossom yeah, bonsai. Yeah. It's a surprise box. And this is a Japanese model. You can't get it anywhere else in the world but Japan. But there was a Japanese seller in Camden Town, and she had these. And it was all ja the box has all Japanese writing on it. It's, it's fully Japanese. And she was saying these are imported from Japan. So it was very expensive. It was like 17 quid. But then, like, this... So, this model is, is from Japan, meaning, like, London is where you can find, like, exclusive import shops, you know? So, that's yeah. I think it's a really cool option. Like, you should definitely check that out. Mm. I, 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 I think, I, this, is, I think yeah. this is a good thing, but the thing is, is that, like, I, it, it's just comes as a surprise, because, like, yeah. I didn't think Bandai Namco would, like... You know, I thought they'd be the last to, like, launch stores, especially that's three. What I'm like, saying. It's, it's yeah. come out of the blue. It, yeah, I mean, you get upon the side, but not even talking about that that much anymore. I'm just trying to say that, yeah, I think our main point to take away, guys, is that, yeah, Bandai Namco, it's, it's, just a, it's a surprise. Why have they just suddenly popped up and opened three stores? It's a bit weird. And in the UK, <laughs> like, it's normally not in the UK. Yeah, it's from, is, like, it America, is it America? Is it Bandai Namco? One of, one of them, <laughs> one of, there's three stores, and none of them are in London, are they? Sheffield, uh, Brighton... And, and Ealing. I don't know where Ealing is. Ealing. I don't know where the fuck Ealing none is. Of, none of them are in London, so this is like... It's a bit strange. Like I don't know why they've not opened one in London. That's a bit weird, but... Yeah, unless Ealing's in London and we've just made a massive mistake. Hang on, this is going to oh, annoy yeah. the heck out of me. Shall I quickly top up where Ealing is? If this is yeah, London, yeah, yeah, then yeah, we've yeah. got a fair point, but where is Ealing? <laughs> Anyone from Ealing, write in, please. It might be London, actually. Actually, Ealing is... Oh, it's in the west. It's West London. It's in West London. You, oh, you, right. So it's not central then. Uh, yeah, it's, it's London. It's like it still counts. But it, it I means so. Yeah, actually, it's a fair point. Actually, they've got they've opened it in the three biggest. I mean, Sheffield's very random. No, come on, hang on. I, yeah, I, I, I retract biggest, that. Right. I retract that. So they've gone Brighton, London. First two options, very good run. I think we can agree those are two big cities in the UK, like the biggest cities. Third. Yeah, yeah. It, I'm thinking Birmingham, <laughs> like that's the third biggest, or Manchester or something. I'd Why say, yeah, Sheffield? Yeah. Why Sheffield. Sheffield? That's where they do the sheep shagging, and there's just loads of fields. Like why? <laughs> why Sheffield? What's Sheffield got I to do know. with it? It's, that's, it's a bit. That's a bit random. That's just it's out so, of place. I think. It's so yeah, exactly. It's like oh Dartford, like it's just it's a random area in the middle of the UK. Oh, I don't know, Rowan. Like it Elton. makes sense. <laughs> Melton. That's like opening one in Melton. Like, it's like yeah, it's, it's, and, and no one cares about Melton. I'm sorry, Melton listeners. Melton. Like, I, I'm trying to say it's like <laughs> it's like it's a, a random area in the middle of the UK that nobody knows about unless they live there. It's like, and I mean Sheffield is known about, but it's like it's not really that. I don't yeah, know. everyone knows Sheffield exists, but it's not like... It's just such a random thing. Like, we've opened yeah. three stores. One in London, right? One in Brighton, right? And one in Sheffield. Like, what? <laughs> I wasn't seeing that coming. Like, if you're going to open, like, five stores and, like, dot them all over the UK and, like, one's in Birmingham, one's in Manchester, one's in Liverpool, one's in Sheffield, that make more sense. But, like, just three stores out of the blue and one's in Sheffield? Like, What? But uh, yeah, I guess I guess I don't. We never know what they're up to. Up to old tricks. Right. I have but, no clue. And then, you know, it's I guess it's a good thing in the yeah. in long term. You know, it, yeah. like 
I think it's good for the community. And if you're in it's Sheffield, just a bit random. I didn't expect it. Yeah, and if you're yeah. in Sheffield, like in the fields, <laughs> go and go and check it out. Oh, anyway, God. anyway, what's not not story number story two? Story number two. Um, Hopefully, it's so a this bit is about, this is more stuff about the Zelda movie. This is ooh, so ooh, um, ooh. this. Yeah, so we're building up to. I don't know when the if there's there's no release date yet, is there? No, but it's been confirmed. So. Very, right. everyone's so, pretty excited. Story number two. Zelda movie director wants film to feel like live action Miyazaki. You Ooh. know what that is? Miyazaki, yes I do. Hang on, I must I must double check what Miyazaki is. I do know this. I do know this. Um <coughs> It's gonna annoy me again if I don't say what a live action Miyazaki is, because I've heard about it a million times. Um Um Oh, hang on. A live action Miyazaki. Oh, Miyazaki is the guy. Uh, is this a t- uh, Miyazaki. Uh, also known as a Mon, Neg- <laughs> what is this? Hang on. I don't know the phrase, actually. I think it's. Uh, Miyazaki, what is it? It's a Japanese thing. Um. Yeah, I, I, hang on, I think hang on, it's hang obvious. Hang on, hang on. That's <laughs> obvious. It's a Japanese. Hey, me, me, no, live action Miyazaki. I know what it is. Miyazaki is actually a guy. He's a Japanese animator and filmmaker, manga artist. Yes, that's it. Live action Miyazaki. Miyazaki oh, right, wrote Spirited okay. Away, the anime stuff. But like a live action Miyazaki. Ah, ah, I get it. It's like um, it's a term used. No, correct me if I'm wrong. Please correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Uh, because there's a lot of uh, movies that were based off. Uh, Hail Miyazaki's animes, and they were like really good. So I'm guessing it's like a live action Miyazaki. Is it to say, oh, it's like it's like a live action of based straight off yeah. the game. I don't know if that makes yeah, so sense. Let's but read, let's I'll try read my this best. Then. This is <laughs> quite read, a long story. Yeah, let's so. read through it. Let's read through it. All right. The live action The Legend of Zelda movie is still a long way off, but the film's director, the Maze Runner and Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes director Wes Ball, has officially shared his hopes and thoughts on the film. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly via Stealth on Twitter, Ball says that he wants his Zelda movie to feel like a live-action Miyazaki movie. Mm, mm. Ball states that he's a big fan of The Legend of Zelda games and a fan of Heyo... Heyo? Yeah. Heyo Miyazaki, yeah, yeah. yeah. Heyo Miyazaki, yeah. Heyo Miyazaki. The acclaimed animated director and co-founder of Studio Ghibli, whose films include Castle in the Sky, Princess Monoc... What the heck? Mono... You need me to say all this. Where are we? Where are we? Mononoke, Mononoke. This is away and 2023's The Boy and the Her- Heron. Sharing his vision, he told the publication that he sees the movie as this awesome fantasy adventure movie that isn't like Lord of the Rings, it's its own thing. Mm-hmm. Talking about the glibly director, he says that he admires the wonder and whimsy that he brings to things and hopes to recreate or at least see that in his Zelda film. Quotes, I would love to see something like that. Mm. All who is currently in New Zealand working on post-production of Kingdom of Planet of the Apes also told EW that he hopes his passions for both Zelda and Miyazaki will shine through their final product. And while production on the movie hasn't yet started, Borna said that we are working on the script and that the hopes to move on to the movie after he's done with the Planet of the Apes movie. The Ghibli and Miyazaki comparisons will hopefully put many fans at ease. Studio Ghibli is often cited as a big dream studio to adapt Link's adventures for the big screen, and many fans have taken to recreating the Zelda games in that style. So, um, mm, that's actually uh, I, I, yeah, I now understand what it means by live action Miyazaki, and I think you do too, Ryan. The realizations hit live action Miyazaki. Miyazaki is like the director guy for things like Spirited Away. You know, you've heard of Spirited Away, the anime, right? I think I have. Yeah, yeah. it's like a really huge anime. Um, like I've seen it. Everyone's seen it if they're interested. Um, and like it's like Studio Ghibli. You know, Studio Ghibli's uh, the Ghibli or I think it's Ghibli the anime. Ghibli. Yeah. Ghibli. Ghibli, yes, yeah, Ghibli. My apologies. Um, it's uh, uh, yeah. it's it's a huge like it's they they like they did like whiskered away. I think one whisker away as well was very really nice. They're really beautiful, nice emotional animes, and like a live action Miyazaki. Like he wanted to feel as magical as a Miyazaki movie, you know, because Miyazaki's always made his animes so wonderful, yeah. and I, even I can vouch for that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I guess the director is taking inspiration from Miyazaki, who did Spirited Away. Uh, and Mum Whisker. They or, wanted to yeah. feel similar to House those movies. Moving so. Castle. Sorry, what? So he wants. He wants. So I guess he. Yeah, he's taking inspiration. He's, he's taking no, inspiration. No, 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 no. Yeah. Ball. That's his. Like, what's it? West Ball. That's his name. Yeah, yeah. He wants it to feel like 
feel like yeah. those movies like similar to them yeah and i guess I mean, that's why fair. it's I like a magical fair. feeling you get like studio ghibli does something like their movies do something you know miyazaki Hayao miyazaki he does things with his, his animes his anime movies uh, have you ever seen a miyazaki because i know you just got into anime you're like watching animes but have you ever seen a miyazaki movie um like okay, I don't, uh, no, I don't, I, I don't know, what, I don't know actually. Spirited Away, House Moving Castle. Um, uh, no, I've not watched those yet. Oh, Rowan, you're missing out. Those, those are like really popular. They're really popular, and but you, you've heard of them, right? But yeah, you need to definitely, I have, but yeah, I've not watched them. Definitely, yet. Not, definitely, I've got a lot of stuff yeah. I've got to watch. It's in the bucket list, yeah. is it? Yeah. I mean, I would definitely yeah. recommend... I'm not going to spoil it or anything, but I think you definitely should watch House Moving Castle or Spirited Away. Yeah. Uh, or any thing. one whisker one whisker away is really good i love that anime um oh what's the other one it's there's the another thing, one right? as well uh silent voice um, is that studio ghibli oh that's a really good one um, here's the thing right um so like yeah. i saw on the nintendo life uh article right um mm. people can put like comments underneath it and and like the top comment like on this post was like uh i think animation still the way to go what do you think about that i disagree you disagree. With something like Zelda, animation would make it childish. <clears throat> with Super Mario, it'd be the opposite. Yeah, Super Live Mario would make it look silly. Like, it would have to just, be, like, yeah. Dress up as Mario. yeah. Exactly. It's never going to be a live... <laughs> but with Zelda, there's something about it that would make it an awesome live action. Because Mario, I think, with in, animation. Like the, in like the 90s, tried like live action and yeah, it failed. Yeah, and it failed miserably. <laughs> but... Um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, in one sense, this new story is saying he wants the film, movie to feel magical. And uh, in, in Legend of Zelda, it is a magical game. Like, it's something that I think is quite... It's very different from any other game. He, he stayed here. It's different from Lord of the Rings. It's different from things like that. Um, and it is. It's a magical game in its own sense. Um, <clears throat> and if I, I think you can agree, Ryan. Looking at Zelda and looking at how it works and how it pans out, an animation would make it look stupid, honestly. An animation is for the games only. If it was a, like, you know, like... The animation is like, what's yeah. it, um, like all the games. Yeah, I know, but they, it, it, that would not work in a proper movie. That would only work in games. Like, because he's actually pretty, he's humanoid, right? He's not like Super Mario, he's got a fat nose and like cartoon eyes. Like, that's just iconic. Like Zelda's like actually uh, yeah. like a human. Nose look. is large. I'm just gonna put it yeah. out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. You know, to go and can you agree with me? A live action Zelda film works. A live action Mario film doesn't. Yeah. 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 It does. Yeah, it, does. Yeah, it, it works. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It, thing, it works. It. it works. Like, and it, like there's yeah. certain things as well, like Pikmin wouldn't work. In yeah. Live action. And it, but it needs to be done correctly. And there needs to be, of course, animation in there. So, like, CGI. There needs to be CGI. Because things like... Yeah. Um, what's that shark dude called from, like, Tears of the Kingdom, was it? Um, no, Breath of the Wild. I forgot. His, like, there's these, like, you know, like... Gany, look at um, Ganondorf, like, the evil king. Like, they've got... There's no way... That they, like, yeah, like... I mean, we've made Star Wars. We've made Lord of the Rings, guys. We can make a Legend of Zelda movie easily with the right resources. Uh, you know, with costumes and things and CGI. Like we can definitely make this work, and um, yeah. I think it's going to look awesome if they do it well. So West Ball, it's all on you, mate. Do it, what do, do you say to the guy who said uh, animation still the way to go on the on the article? Disagree, disagree, I disagree. Yeah. I think animation. I would make disagree. It, I yeah. Think it, yeah, I think it would go down. The, I mean, do you think differently, or do you just agree with me? It would, it would, it would look a lot better on live I action. It would look. I think it would look better on live action. I think that's my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you. It's it's that's my opinion there because, and again, it is everyone's opinion on it as well. Like there is many opinions about it, and yeah, it, that is the main opinion that works. Like live, yeah. a, a live that's action it. Zelda would work. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. A live action Mario wouldn't. Like if Chris Pratt yeah. and Charlie Day actually dressed up, like that would just look I silly. Would, I would laugh my way out the cinema and not pay. <laughs> anyway, you just walk out going ha. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would, I'd all cry. You need oh, a laugh God. or cry. But anyway, yeah, guys, let us know if you also want the film to be inspired. Inspi Do you agree with being inspired by right, Hayao yeah. Miyazaki, which was an amazing right, director? You, so. you think it should be animation or live action? Yeah, right tell in, us, right. tell us, tell us. And I think Ryan, that this is a, this is a good direction because Hayao Miyazaki is famously like known for his amazing work. So. To have an amazing Zelda work film would be you're gonna like walk ace. out the movie theater crying like because it's so emotional. Yeah, <laughs> that 
Zelda film. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I must end up uh, the Zelda film killing me. Oh, dear. <laughs> Zelda Dying on live. RFD died to the Zelda film. I died to the Zelda film. I don't know what happened there. Right. I do um, not know what happened. Anyway, what's going on, Rome? Why is, why is everyone crying in the next news story? Why is everyone sad? What's happened? <laughs> Oh, um, this is actually quite controversial. So, mm. story number three is Nintendo Life 2024 Tokyo has been cancelled. <gasps> this is something that we talked about, isn't it? We talked about this. We talked about the yeah. We talked. We announced it as well. And what? Well, why yeah. is it? Why has it been well, cancelled? It's, it's been cancelled. So let's read. What Nintendo happened? has today announced that the first <laughs> Nintendo Live event of 2024, which was set to place take place in Tokyo, has been cancelled. Shit. Alongside this. Several competitive events, including the Splatoon Koshien 2023 National Finals, the Splatoon 3 World Championship 2024, and the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe <laughs> Online Challenge Final Stage have been postponed. Nintendo City, City, wait, Nintendo cites safety concerns as the main reason for the changes, following the company receiving numerous threats targeting its employees and spreading to the wider community. Ooh. First addressing the postponement of the... Sa oh. Splatoon Koshian 2023 National Finals, which was set to take place from the 16th to the 17th of December. Nintendo stated that threats made to the company employees had begun to spread to even staff and spectators. It's not clear what exactly these threats entailed, but with the guarantee of safety, the event has been postponed. You can read Nintendo's comment uh, translated via Google below. Our company has been persistently receiving threats targeting our employees, and recently the targets of these threats have spread to spectators, staff, etc., of the Splatoon Koshian 2023 National Finals. Considering safety as our top priority, we have made the decision to postpone the event. It appears that customer safety was also the main concern in the cancellation of Nintendo Live 2024 Tokyo, as and the subsequent postponement of the Splatoon 3 World Championship and the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Championship, both of which were scheduled to take place at the event. Nintendo has stated that it will no longer be possible to purchase tickets for either competition, both of which are going to be rescheduled for a later date. The reorganized dates of each event will be announced on the company website and on the official Twitter account once they are confirmed. This is big stuff, wow. actually. Um, wow. So they've wow. been getting threats. So Nintendo have been getting threats. Um, this is, I mean, this is big news. I didn't actually know about this until you just read it now. Uh, I mean, um, this isn't... First of all, I apologize if you've purchased a ticket to this and... Or oh, you should get a refund, sure. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, it's been <laughs> rescheduled. Tend to run off with the money, then that's a bit. Yeah, uh, well, there, there's there's some things I've got to say on this, definitely. Um, first of all, I'd like to know what threats. Like, why are they getting threats? But then, again, not said, could they? this? Just said yeah, but then rumors. again, I'm not surprised. Nintendo no, are not. an ass company. Been um, acting like an ass. I mean, to be fair, like yeah, the fact that they've had to shut down the events, it sounds like the threats were something along the lines of, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this to the event. I'm gonna take like a bomb in or something." Now something this, like that. this is interesting, all right, because I think me and Eli spoke about this, and me and you did before, like I think a few weeks ago. We spoke about we covered some horrific things that Nintendo have been doing in the past year. They've got hor horrifically worse. Like they've been oh, absolutely. <clears throat> but I, no, the, yeah, yeah, hands like, like, the higher up. The like higher the ups. Icon, uh, this is the thing, right? This is yeah, the higher ups of Nintendo are dickheads, arseholes, and that's the only way to describe it. And then the company, I hate the company's dick. I can't lie, the company sucks ass. I do not like the company whatsoever. Like we have a podcast about Nintendo, but Nintendo, I actually despise you. I love the games you make, but I despise you as a company because what you do to people. Honestly, that's what I'm gonna say. Like Nintendo yep. should be ashamed of themselves. Honestly, Nintendo are an ass company when it comes to management. Like we don't need to. We don't need to. For a quick recap, if you're a, a listener that's been listening under the rock and you for some reason condone Nintendo, Nintendo. Uh, sue people, uh, particularly people that are their fans, like Point Crow. Point Crow was sued, like, like, well, no, not sued. He, he had videos taken down, like, basically, he has his entire career taken down just because he modded some Zelda game, and then he apologised, and they took other videos down that were not even like they were vanilla. They weren't even about like modding videos. Nintendo still took them down. That's not the. That's not even the tip of the iceberg, though. That, no, that is the tip of the iceberg. They, um, in short, I mean, we, there's so many things Nintendo have done, but in short, one of the biggest things they did is they, after a man, of course, was illegal called Gary Bowser, he actually was started, you know, he he pirated games on the Switch. <coughs> they, um, he served. He sold a bunch of hacked he, switches, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he served like seven years in prison, and then when he came out, they put him into debt for $10 million. Like, he's going to be in debt for like the rest yeah, of his life. Exactly, and his livelihood. 
They just they just be yeah. just because he did the thing is a he bad didn't thing. even make that like he didn't even make ten million from selling the switch exactly so. exactly and here's the thing right they are they've decided just because of his bad thing he did and there's no doubt it was bad that they 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 have actually proved that they're the worst people in this in this situation they proved that they are bad because they've just said right we're going to cancel his family now here's the thing I do not condone death threats I do not condone any of that I think we can agree with that. that's horrible yeah. people yeah. employees should not have to suffer that but if you're going to work for a company which are horrifically bad in the way they deal with things I'm actually not surprised Nintendo have been receiving death threats and if so I want to know what are they like how dare you do this I'm going to kill you I don't know like but here's the thing Ryan Nintendo kind of are asking for it first of all but I do I do feel like a big sense of sorrow for the people that have been going through that because it's not, the employees as receiving the threats are not the people to blame they're just employees of like they make the games that we love and they probably disagree yeah. with the Nintendo themselves they have got they're not the people making those decisions like I feel so bad yeah. that Nintendo Ow. employees are getting those threats yeah when it's not no, even but, their fault. Like, no, it's not their fault. But the th like, uh, this is the thing, right? But then the again, fact, it's not surprising. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. But the fact, though, like, I f this is what I, this is my opinion, right? The fact that they've had to cancel, uh, like, and postpone all these events. Yeah. To just to me, like, the threat <clears throat> was, some was something, <clears throat> at, like, was something similar to, like, oh, I'm going to, you know, like, take some into the, the event. Bomb yeah. the place, stab, start stabbing, shooting, I don't know, something like that, right? Because yeah. if it was just, like, if it was just, like, simple little threats like like someone sent a nintendo employee a message like oh i know where you live they wouldn't mm. cancel the whole event for that but something along the lines of oh i'm going to go to the event and do this that's you know mm. that that then puts everyone that then puts because they said spectators and staff mm. in like say like they said the safety of spectator so the spectators are the people at the event so it must have been a threat like about the event surely so that's what it seems like yeah i agree with you like these threats must have been serious um, and in one sense, you know, again, like, I'm not surprised this has happened because it seems that finally people have lost their fuse with Nintendo. Like Nintendo have yeah. done these things over and over again, and it's gotten to the point where not not only people are complaining about them online, like me and you, but there are actually like there are some fucked up people in this world, and they all do fucked up things, and therefore those exactly. fucked up people. And if you also and if like, you... and yeah, and they if if they find out uh, and look look, the whole world has seen what Nintendo has done, and the whole world isn't nice. I'm honest. I'm honest, and like, I'm not. Please don't take me take us wrong. I'm not saying what the people have done is correct. I'm not saying the people that are threatening Nintendo they're being bad by doing. You should not threaten like employees like that. That is bad. But then again, I'm not surprised that Nintendo are getting this much hate to the point where they need to close down an event. It is a serious issue, uh, but yeah. then again, they have put their foot in it. I'm just saying. There's like, people, like, that's a, yeah, that, and that's what I say, like, is that, you know, if you, like, you know, the, these death threats are bad, right? That's, yeah. There's no doubt about that. But if you are, like, doing this stuff like, like the Nintendo's doing, yeah. you're going to have people who absolutely hate you. And some mm. people are messed up in the head, and some people who absolutely despise you, if they're messed up in the head, they're going to do stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you're and, and the thing is, right, with those people that are going to do that stuff, like Nintendo, I mean, let's be honest, Nintendo are putting their own employees at risk by acting Absolutely. so high wire with like just being so like suing people like left right and centre for no reason at all taking YouTubers jobs away like to the point where me and Rowan are like can we even find a career out of doing a podcast on Nintendo games when Nintendo we could be sued ourselves by a billion dollar company <laughs> right N listen Nintendo um, they're let's be honest Nintendo they've shut down this event and they're like we need to shut this down for safety reasons but to be honest with you Nintendo you're the ones putting your employees at risk because of how you act. And that's like you're acting in a way that is like just abhorrently bad. And then there are people outside are going to attack your employees for that. This is it's my not their fault. With Nintendo. <laughs> no, that's the thing. This is my problem with Nintendo, right? Is that they, yeah. like, they're, like the higher ups, right? These like, yeah. certain Thai kind of guys. They're, they're, those guys making these decisions, right? Yeah, it's bad. Obviously, like it's it's bad, right? But the thing is, the reason why it's so bad is because, pe like me and you, obviously know that it's just the higher ups, right? But yeah. people who perhaps don't know that much about Nintendo, or perhaps just you know neutrals or just, just observing yeah. it, 
it's going to come across as the whole of Nintendo is doing this. And that yeah, then yeah, exactly. that all the employees who are just innocent. Exactly. There are many, look, and look, there are thousands, if not millions of employees. Like, look at, like, let's just branch off to, like, Animal Crossing, for instance, and take Takeshi, um, Miyazoka, I think. What's, what, I forgot his name. Um, I, I, that is the wrong name, but let's just take the composer for the Animal Crossing music, right? He's a Nintendo music producer, right? And he produced the music for Animal Crossing and some other Nintendo games. Let's just take him, for instance. He's a Nintendo employee. He's innocent. He's not made any of these decisions. But Nintendo, the company he works for, are... They do something really bad, which they have done uh, like over and over again. They've been horrible to their, their, their fan base. He's going to get that hate, not the actual higher-ups, because no one knows who they are. Because no one knows who the higher-ups are, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So they're well, just going to look at the employees and go, you're a piece of shit. Well, no, well, it's yeah. the higher-ups who are. <laughs> so, yeah, honestly, me, like, um, fact, this is the fact that they've had to, like... This is big, like, the fact. Yeah. This is the first time I've heard about this. So, in short, guys, yeah, this is big. Nintendo are are actually getting serious hate now. To the point where that just closed down an event, and that is serious. That is very serious. Um, uh, all I can say is, well, I'm not surprised, and I do hope those employees. I feel sorry for you guys that you've had to go through this. Honestly, uh, I don't condone the threats. But yeah, then yeah. again, Nintendo. It, it seems they're fine. It, will Will Nintendo learn from this? Will they understand why they're getting this? Like, yeah, if they, they, I think they, they, this should be like the biggest wake up call. Oh yeah, like, like we can boycott like them, we can yeah. complain all we want, but when it comes down to death threats and actual fucked up people getting involved, that 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 could actually do some damage. Nintendo need to be careful, and Nintendo are asking for all this. Like, honestly, Nintendo, not everyone is is nice out there. Not everyone is nice. Yeah. Not everyone is 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 good. Like, <laughs> and there are people out there that are immature that do not care, and they'll do what they want. And, it, and and Nintendo is a global company that have enraged everybody. Quite literally, everybody's been enraged by them. And that is going to be some of the bad people out there. They're going to be enraged. And it looks like they've actually they've actually hit on Nintendo for once. And Nintendo are now being like, oh shit, uh, let's cancel the event. We're getting hate. But Nintendo, it's your fault. <laughs> you're putting your employees at risk. You're doing this stuff. It's no surprise you're getting these bad threats yeah. to the point where you have to shut down the live event of 2024. That's pretty serious. But are they going to yeah. learn from this? Learn from I don't this. think like, this so. Should be a, I don't. Like the biggest, <laughs> but this should be like the biggest wake-up call for Nintendo. I, yeah, they, it should be. And I, I'm interested to hear everyone else's thoughts on this. Uh, honestly, I want to hear Eli's thoughts as well on this because like, we talked about this a lot. And it looks like, bam, like things are actually getting serious now. Like Nintendo are getting hate from the wrong people. And that's gonna that's gonna spell bad stuff for the employees. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Big news. Anyway. I think. Yeah, yeah. That's, but anyway, yeah. yeah anyway, um, let's have a ad break now. <laughs> Definitely need one now after that bit of a heavy topic. But we'll be back with the ad break uh, after the ad break with your questions of the week. Hello and welcome to the JR's Gaming Podcast. I am Judah Terry, the host of this podcast, and if you are a regular listener to this podcast, you would know that me and Robin both love hearing feedback from our listeners. Each week at the end of each episode, we have a great time reading out emails that are sent in to us. We read out and answer your questions, comments, and even complaints. So if you have something to say to us, do get in touch and write in an email to gaming 135 at gmail.com. That is gaming 135 at gmail.com. T's and C's do not apply. On with the show. And we're back uh, from the ad break. Uh, Rowan. Lovely ad. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> I love how you say that every single time. Lovely <laughs> ad. Lovely ad. Anyway, Rowan, um, what is... Like, I think we should let you read the question now. What's the question of the week this week? What have we got? Who's written in? Right, so we've, got, we've got a question from Jake. Jake. Right. Hello, Jake. Right. Uh, hey there, Judah and Rowan. I'm a fairly new listener here. Just emailing in to say I love this podcast and I listen to every episode. Thank you. A question for both mm. of you is what was the results of your Spotify wrapped this year? Just curious. He he. Jake from Canada. Yeah, Jake from um, Canada. Oh, thanks nice. for writing in. Spotify thanks for listening to every wrapped. episode. I better get uh, out. Spotify wrapped. Yeah, I think you, you handle that sort of stuff, I think. Well, like I think he's... 
there, there's also the the an- analytics of the podcast that I guess he's probably, is that what it is. But I think he's referring to our just general Spotify apps, like our listening, like our playlists. Yeah. Um, have you got your Spotify app yet, Rowan? I don't know. Let me have a look. That's I, you know, I love the Spotify apps, but let me have a look if I can find my Spotify apps. Can you find yours? What? Wait, well, how? <laughs> I'm a bit confused. <laughs> Uh, you know, you know what Spotify Wrapped is. You know, they tell you all your the songs of, your, of the year. Yeah, I think yeah, but like, how do you find it? Oh, okay. I just typed it in. Just say what? my Spotify Wrapped. Where? Uh, type on, on it on. The yeah, type, yeah, or, or yeah, in the app or Google. Yeah, I've got I've got mine up in front of me now. I just I just googled it because I'm already logged in. <clears throat> so. Wait, you, wait, is it your top songs? Yes, that's it. That's it. It's top songs. Right. Okay, Jake. Well, Jake's made us do this. Um. Uh. Oh, okay. Okay, I've, I've I've seen my top artists. Shall I say them out? Yeah, sure. Okay, so my top artists. Shall I say mine while you get yours? Um. Yeah. So my first top artist is Gabor Verm's group <laughs> and they are a bass group Jake they are a bass guitar group so they play bass uh, second is Hank Marvin he's an electric guitarist I've listened to him most uh, third place is Brandy <laughs> I'm a massive look this is like just this is just like shining into my like my music tastes I, yeah I like the 80s I like the old music how do you get like First place, second place, third place. Is at the minute it's just showing me like top songs. Uh, just type in on Google, Ryan, Spotify Wrapped. Just do that. Okay, hold on. Just do that. I'll let I'm you find. Hard time it. <laughs> Don't worry. Just type in on Google your Spotify Wrapped, and it should it should, it should, it should hello, Ryan. Your, your yeah. Spotify. Twenty twenty three Wrapped. That's it. That's it. You got the right one. That's it. Bloody hell. Bloody. Yeah, this is... I, I didn't even know this was a thing before now. Oh, man, I can't believe... I mean, nor did I, really, until, like, three years ago. Everyone on Instagram is posting about it, but uh, I guess it's something that people... I don't really check mine, but it's teaching Rowan how to find a spot for apps. It's like teaching Rowan how to drive a bloody car. Have <laughs> <laughs> if you, if you worked out yet? You got your stuff? Yeah, yeah, I've got, my, I've got uh, top songs in, like, a... Okay, um, I t- I'll read off my top artists and then I'll show you my top songs. So, third place got Brandy and fourth place got BB No Money. I listen to him a lot. Um, and fifth place got Super Junior, the K-pop band. Um, yeah, that's my top artist. Uh, let's see what else I've got. Um, I have... That was fun. Uh, yeah, so yeah. We've got top songs. Show me to read my top five songs and then you read yours. Yeah. Okay, my top five sons were Look Up, I don't know what that, <laughs> uh, Tighten Up by the Black Keys, uh, Slap the Bass, uh, La- the La La Rocks, and Venice. So they're my top five right. songs, which is confusing because um, I've, I've listened to definitely something more than that. But anyway, what's yours, Ryan? I know, this is, mine are looking a bit weird. So basically, uh, I'll read my top three artists. So the. the um... Yeah. Oh, third, uh, third, top third, like the third in third place artist. This is weird. Yeah. I only listened to one song of his like, this year. Yeah. That's Snoop Dogg. They've given me Snoop Dogg for number three when I only listened to like one of his songs. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, I didn't actually listen to the Black Keys that much either. Uh, but he's uh, number yeah. two is Oliver Tree. You heard of Oliver yeah. Tree? Yeah, I have indeed. Yeah, all yeah, the tree. I, I mean, I, I think I listened to a couple, but and then uh, number one, I, I get this. It, it's Interworld. Now, yeah, you won't you won't know what Interworld is, but it's basically like um, you know that that Interworld. funk type music. Yes, like the singing yeah, music. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Basically that. Yeah, like closed eyes uh, and, and then, stuff. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. And then I've got uh, what's it? Uh, number three. Uh, what's it? Uh, oh yeah, number three is Drop It Like It's Hot with Snoop Dogg and Pharrell ooh, Williams. I nice. listened to that like once, so I don't know why that's on the third. <laughs> that's what but, I mean, like Spotify is just confusing stuff. Number two is uh, The Real Slim Shady by oh, Eminem. Oh, Eminem. I like that song. So a lot and of then, rap from Rowing, uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then number one, yep. uh, when well, I'm listening to a lot of Christmas now, so, but number oh. one is Metamorphosis Interworld, and that's like one of the... Nice. One of the, I know uh, that one. No, I know that song. So, yep. Yeah. I'm mainly yeah. just yeah 
You just you just seen an insight it. into our music taste. It's fair. Yeah. Like some of some of the picks there aren't like like I listened to like like once and like yeah. That was it. And me too. Like, 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 they, they me <laughs> Brandy, like I listen to like, two of her songs. <laughs> it's like he's exactly, got on third yeah. best artist. But yeah, everyone else is pretty on point. I do like Gabriel, Gabriel Verms, the bass group. I do also listen to a lot of BB No Money. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, I mean, you're. I'm, I do listen to rap now and again. But I know that you're a massive rap guy. Like you listen to Snoop Dogg, you listen to Eminem, you listen to all yeah. those rappers. Uh, but yeah, like uh, I, my, my ex girlfriend was like a massive Eminem fan. Like I, all the time she'd play Eminem songs. I actually know every single Eminem song now due to her. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, he's, he's interesting. I, 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 if there's a rapper that I do like, it's probably gonna be BB No Money. Um, just, just he's just one of my favourite creators in general. <laughs> if if you don't know who BB No Money is, I think a lot of people know he's the La 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 guy. Yeah. <laughs> and and people get that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a lot of love guy. I think I mean you um I introduced him to you right and you were like, Oh I love that. You like his I like his Yeah, it's beat. my type of music, yeah. Yeah. Have you heard any of his other songs? I, I, Edamame is like his most Edamame, top song. Yeah. yeah. I like Edamame, yeah. Edamame is a, a classic. Uh and that's that's that I don't know why that's not my top song. Like I don't know why why isn't Edamame? Exactly. I like, listen- Spotify, I don't know. Spotify's <laughs> judgment is a bit yeah. weird. I listen to Edamame literally five times a day. I don't know why. It's just in my playlist and I play it a lot. Why is it not coming up? Like I don't know why. I don't uh, know. I don't yeah, think, yeah. There, there are those are our uh, official 2023 Spotify. Right? Official, Spotify not so not official. Very good yeah. at picking stuff, but yeah, not I so good. I guess we'll find out. It'll basically, be more fine tuned next year. Hopefully, I guess we'll find out. And if you're asking for the analytics of the podcast, well, well, Jake, you got to wait till the Christmas special because the Spotify Wrapped mm. podcast analytics also ties into the award ceremony, uh, and it does. It, 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 we'll be reading it out with the awards. So. Do listen out for the 23rd of December, the Christmas JR's Gaming Special. But until then, guys, until the next episode that we do with you, it's a uh, please send in your questions, like Jay did, to JR's Gaming135 at gmail.com. Uh, my plan just went strange. Uh, anyway, we're back. <laughs> uh, please subscribe or follow us on whatever platform you're listening from and leave us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts. <laughs> as this will help us out greatly and get the podcast around. I uh, don't know why I did that, honestly. Uh, but anyway, our socials will be in the description below our Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, website, and Discord. Until then, it's a goodbye from me, Rowan. How many more days until Christmas? 16. 16 days. Goodbye from me, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Of how you knew. <laughs> of course I know.